our scripture text comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 1 to 13. Hear the word this morning. The kingdom of heaven is will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy, and they slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look! Here comes the bridegroom, coming out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and us. You better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet and shut the door. Later, one of the bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. May God add a blessing to this reading. You may be seated. title of the message this week is People Get Ready. And I keep thinking of that song, that old song. People get ready. There's a train coming. You don't need a ticket. Just get on board. Well, I, I would suggest to you that maybe we do need a ticket, but we need to get ready to get ready. I want to start this morning with uh, a story about two people. In early 1874, for those history buffs, an inventor named Elijah Gray transmitted a few musical notes over a telegraph wire. He thought to himself, if I can send musical notes, perhaps then I could send the human voice. The New York Times reported predictions of a talking telegraph, and the public began to grow eager for it. And just one year later, Gray believed that he had the answer. This tin can-like voice chambers connected to a wire where <coughs> liquid that could, could turn vibrations into signals is what came to his mind. But inexplicably, he did not put his idea down on paper for over two months. After finally making the sketch, he waited another four days before he went to the patent office. When he arrived, Mr. Gray was told that just two hours earlier, a school teacher had come through that same door <coughs> with his own sketch and had already applied for the patent. His name was Alexander Graham. Bell. When you compare the sketches, the voice chambers, the wire, the liquid, everything was identical. The reason we know Alexander Graham Bell's name today, and maybe we've never heard of Elisha Gray, is simply because one man sees the opportunity when he could. The other waited until it was too late. Powerful story this morning. The same could be said for the bridesmaids, the five bridesmaids in our story that we see today. Some of them waited, <coughs> and some of them were ready. How do you prepare for things? Do you procrastinate? Or do you do so many things at one time that you don't get anything done? How are you in this preparation 
of your spiritual lives. Are you procrastinating there too, in that area of your lives? A good example we have in this text is truly about these ten people, the ten bridesmaids, because we see that five are ready and five are not. I would suggest to us this morning that there are some things that we just can't get from other people. Some things you must do alone in your life. There are some things that you have to build on your own. Some of those things include our character. You know, when is, when's the last time you built somebody else's character? You might by testing them, but they still get to build their own character. Or how about the example that our lives are, that we're living? Are we a living example? No one else walks in your shoes. They might borrow your shoes, but they don't walk in your shoes. Ew, huh? <laughs> you, your life is an example. Or how about our personal relationship with God? Did you know that your relationship with God is personal? It's unique to you? I think it's awesome that God can just converse with me and converse with you and everybody and still have be insanity. You know, be sane. Because God is just omnipotent, all-knowing. God is everywhere. And that's just, sometimes it's mind-boggling. How can, how can you do that, God? Give me some of that. But then I have to be careful if I'm asking for some of that. Then I know that I will get challenged. The Gospel of Matthew is full of examples of community trying to make a way and to, to develop some of these habits, some of these leadership habits. The issues some of these folks face is that many of them have been excommunicated from the synagogue and abandoned by their families. That should sound familiar to mm -hmm. us. I know some of you were excommunicated, and it happens when you're turned away from the communion table or whatever it may be. We know what that feels like. They were facing the imminent threat of a hostile empire without the comfort and safety of supporting structures. Maybe some of you face hostile work environments or, or some, type of family, some type of family struggle that, that, that gets in the way. These new believers were struggling just to, just to survive. Don't we struggle too sometimes just to survive? So there's this urgency to form a bold and commitment union with, with other souls, with other people in this community of faith. We're not much different than these people trying to trying to work in community, trying to live in community, trying to use our gifts in community. So this, this is interesting because then Jesus gives this invitation to the community of believers that is kind of perplexing when he says, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten bridesmaids who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. The ten, ten seems equivalent in their responses and their enthusiasm. They were all excited. They were all excited. Yeah. yeah all right. <laughs> <laughs> ten lamps burning, and then, then a little time goes by, and they, they go to sleep. Ten bridesmaids sleeping. Sounds like a Christmas song. <laughs> then, ten bridesmaids waking up, hearing that the groom had arrived. <coughs> ten bridesmaids uh, excited to get the party started. Woo-ha! You know, when there's a wedding, there's a party. Woo-ha! But, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Only five bridesmaids have enough oil to keep their lamps lit. So while the five who are running on empty go out to look for a 
24-7 convenience store, the others go to the party and the door is shut. The callous groom refused to open up even when they return with well-supplied burning lamps, crying their confession of faith, Lord, Lord, but the door remains slammed in their face with unexpected empathy. I don't know you. And this is how it ends. Bam. That's how it ends. Now, I'm thinking, what? You don't know me? You don't know me? We may not like the ending because it seems to me, well, it seems a little callous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it goes against the grain of some of the things that we are taught. But truly, if Jesus said the kingdom of God will be like this, that's what he means. And so I think that we must pay attention because one day God will return and the question is, will we have to run out and get ready or will we be ready? Simple. If we have to run out and get ready, I will suggest that you will have missed the opportunity. <laughs> the eternal opportunity. Maybe we just don't like to hear this kind of talk. And it's frustrating when Jesus compares the kingdom of God to these ten bridesmaids and the lamps and all that stuff. Maybe it's because the kind of community to which they truly invite us to come into is like nothing else. It's not like anything else. And it is the fullness that is required of us to be the individuals that make a commitment. To be the individuals that requires more of us. Because it does. Maybe we have forgotten about the, the narrow gate or the weeping and the gnashing of teeth. Or what about the parable of the seeds and the sower, or the wheat, weeds and the wheat, or the other parables about the woman who gave all she had. See, Jesus said those things too, and those teachings too. As much as we want to argue against or rewrite the ending of this parable, we cannot do it, because that is not just any wedding party. You see, nor is this a regular lamp that, that we like to talk about or a commodity. The oil is not just a commodity to be traded or gifted or loaned or, bar or bartered or even sold. As much as the bridesmaids may have wanted to share it, you see, they couldn't. They couldn't share it. Because, as many who have studied this parable closely realize, this kind of spiritual fuel is what it is. This kind of spiritual fuel you just cannot get from somebody else. It would be like, listen up, young people. It would be like... <laughs> It's all state of mind. <laughs> well, I better listen. You better listen. It's like copying a friend's homework. You can do that, but what you can't copy is the hours of study and the process of understanding it the process of learning how you got to that answer. You might know the answer, but how you get there is just as important as the answer. <laughs>
And sometimes you learn more from the process of going through to get the answer than you do by having the answer. It's like a surgeon may successfully transplant a heart from one body to another, but they can't transfer the original recipient's love for their children or their passion for sports or anything else. There are some kinds of preparations that only we can do for ourselves. Spiritual reserves. No one else can build up for us. We do that ourselves. It's something we each have to prepare for and depending on, and, and as we deepen our relationship, as we deepen our life with God, this oil of the Spirit fills our soul. It will replenish our broken places. I'm pressed in with this parable with the urgency of being ready to fuel up and to have my life's wick <coughs> trimmed so that when the master comes, I will be ready. And whether the master comes tomorrow, the next week, five weeks, a year, 500 years from now, it doesn't matter because nobody knows the day or the hour. But I'll tell you what, saints, I want to be ready. And so I can get ready. I'm not ready, but I'm ready. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> what I realize is that all ten of the bridemaids were awakened, and the time for gathering the oil had run out. You see, difficult times come to all of us. In every life, and it's in the obscurity that we most need the sustenance of the kind of oil that Jesus is talking about here. The sustenance, the assurance of the abundance of the promise of God, this peace that passes all understanding, this depth of hope that can stain us through the darkest disappointments, through our worst failures, through devastation, through loss, through grief, through any kind of closed doors in our life. If we have this oil of sustenance, we will make it. And you know what? The oil of sustenance is free. It's free to you. You know, if I could send you down to the 24-7 store to buy an oil of sustenance bottle, I would. But it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. The sustaining hope and the spiritual life come from being ready when God calls upon you. It comes from being ready, and it comes from doing it anyways. Even though your knees might be shaking and your life still has questions, you do it anyway. You do it anyway. We each have to seek our own spiritual sustenance, and the irony is that we usually discover what we need is right before us. It's with other people. It's other people seeking the same spiritual food and the spiritual fuel. We do it together. And you know what we find out? That you always have more than you thought you had. You always are able to do what you thought you couldn't do. And why? It's because the spiritual sustenance is within you that God has given you to do it, to be more, to be brave, to be bold, to be the people that God's called you to be, to tap into that place. 
Jesus emphasized the importance of a faithful community throughout the Gospel of Matthew. Yes, we're faithful, but we need leaders to step up. We need people who are willing to say, as, as uh, Joshua said, here am I, send me. Or was that Daniel? No, either one. <laughs> here am I, send me. I think it was Joshua. <laughs> this is when Christ's promises can come to us. That can, they can be with us. And we can rest assured that the Holy Spirit is among us. As we gather together, as we reach out and replenish, as we reach out from even our spiritual reserves, God will bless us. God will bless us. So today, saints, you get to choose. Will your life spiritually flow or are you having to go out to the convenience store to refill? Will your life have enough or are you always looking for love in the wrong places? <laughs> the choice is yours. The time for us to trim our wicks is now. The time for us to get ready is now. The time for us to let our light shine is now. Will you do it? I pray the answer, of course, yes. is yes. 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 God bless you this morning. Amen. Amen. Amen.